to your we can see your screen but you have to share your ppt no i'm i've just shared it it's not coming we can see the screen of your computer but uh, fine is not coming just one second to give me a yes now you have to yes now we can see it now it's okay yes yes okay thank you uh you know uh what we have to understand you put it in the slide that, mode that will be like more handy in slide mode when you know what happened it is it go automatically so i don't want to go automatically fine, fine. Be, okay so i can go ahead with this only sometimes fine. what happened it, in my system it go automatically fine so uh, i don't i don't know uh, uh this is what we have to understand here is the medieval point so before coming to the topic first you need to understand what is medieval points and what is the important change changes taken place in this particular period so uh, indian coinage in my study what i have studied so far on the coins of the indian coinage i try to divide indian coinage into two broad categories category 1 is the coins which has the uh, pictorial devices one way or other the inscription has not been given prime importance is there but the marginal inscription can be seen on the points of uh, 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 this this phase the second phase of six top type we can divide is where inscriptional became the prime feature so this is two important phases in india first phase is primarily noticed in ancient india ancient india is only medieval also so most of the coins either it is panchmar coins or it is kushan uh, gupta wherever you want to see you have seen some of the coins most of the coins are pictorial based inscription on these coins are not the prime feature it was a marginal inscription so the first category of coins is the inscriptional based coin the point category and the second category of coins which i try to understand is the coins with the inscription that is area where medieval period the coins were issued with the inscription based so one category is ancient period where inscription was not given prime importance and the second category of the coins where inscription became the prime feature there are two important difference of this so the moment you see uh, uh, i said say for example if you want to say that uh, we have a coin with inscription a one coin without inscription so of course the coin became more informative where inscription is come so the medieval coins which were issued in 13th century onwards we can talk about the 13th century to 18th century the 13th century and 18th century or the period uh, is the period where most of the coins were in india most of i'm not saying all the coins most of the coins in india were issued with, with this particular style where inscription became the prime feature so the moment you have inscription on the coins you get more information from it. so entire information coming on the coins of medieval period i try to divide into two group again two different type of information can be uh, taken from these coins so one category of the coins is one type of information is the religious information and the other category of information is secular information when you say religious information to so try to remember one thing just yes, i think few hours back few 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 hours back amitesh was just explained to you what type of information you get you get coins where god and goddess has been depicted iran you have seen iran god we have seen the greek god we have seen hindu god and goddess we can see in the coins where gautam buddha has been depicted so depiction of deities and the depiction of religious messages are very commonly noticed on the coins of medieval period so it's not a new concept what type of messages were in religious it was dependent upon the ruler's choice what was the real it reflect the 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 the, the relation of the rulers with a particular faith of a particular faith as well as his own belonging to that so whenever you find the coins of any particular dynasty if you see the coins of for and when kanish converted to buddhism he issued coins with the gautam buddha because he was a ruler he was a believer of buddhism so he started issuing similarly hindu greek had issued coins with their, their own god and goddess so that was the reason 
in the medieval period what we also find we find a new tradition that was inscription based and the ruling authority in this particular period were the muslims so they have their own religion they believe a particular religion they were followers of islam so they started issuing coins religion has been depicted as per their own faith as per their own belief. so what does the people they don't believe any deities and all that so deity has not been depicted no god they do they do not depict any uh, uh, photograph of any religious person because that does not allow them to make so what they started they started giving religious information in the form of kalma the basic creed of islam shahada or kalma so you get the coins where in you find kalma so one information you get in the category of religious information category 2 in, in the religious category we can also find the coin where in you you have coins where in you get the information the name of caliph caliph is the, uh, the force which came into existence of the death of prophet muhammad and he is being he was being considered the both religious and political head of the islamic world so we have the name of the contemporary caliph abbasid contemporary caliph on the coins as well as on the coins of uh, as well as the coins of uh, as well as the name of the great caliph so this is also coming on the The third message which you receive from the points of medieval period is you get the coins where being used by the by the sultan, and quite not quite often a few coins have been reported where the Quranic verses have also been seen on them. this was the this three four information we are getting in the religious category now coming to the secular category sorry what sir sir that? yeah sir Please. we had lost you uh, for some time when you were discussing about the caliph and after that we could not hear it properly oh so it is not coming no you your your voice was not coming properly there was some network issue so you were discussing okay, about okay. the I'll, caliph i'll just i'll just make within one minute Uh, we could not hear you for some time sir okay sir is it possible for you to try without this uh, microphone i guess the voice is not you know it, it comes very very slowly uh, you can also remove the microphone and use the laptop uh, nested audio hello I think Basha Mahbu Basha sir, he has disconnected his Wi-Fi and then will join again. Can you hear me, sir? अभी आवाज आ रही है क्या हाँ आवाज आ रही है बट सर आप एक बार ना बगैर ये इयरफोन के ट्राई कीजिए लैपटॉप का ऑडियो इस्तेमाल कीजिए देखिए आवाज कैसी आती है अभी देखिए आ रही आवाज आ आ रही है आ रही इयरफोन के बोलिए सर अच्छा उसके ठीक Uh, can I go ahead? Yes, yes, go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so I was discussing that the name of great caliph and the contemporary caliph is appearing. So three, one, first point I said the shahada that is kalma. Second is the name of great caliph. Third, you can say the religious title, the Islamic title, and the fourth one is the some of the coins have been recorded with Quranic verses. That is all the, about the religious information. Well, the secular information. When we talk, that we are just simply talking about the one information that is name of the ruler. Number one, you get the coins where name of the ruler is appearing. Often, get the name of fathers. Sometimes, grandfather's name is also appearing from the coins. Then we have date on the coins. Date is the Hijri calendar. Most of the coins in Islamic period, in this primordial period, are 
are reported with the uh, hijri character date in hijri character and the fourth one is the mint name where it was stuck delhi agra ajmer hyderabad wherever the coin was stuck it was mentioned the bangalore or uh, allahabad or uh, arkat wherever it is established it was stuck that was coming this type of information coming on the coins has been termed as the islamic type coins and we call it islamic type coins of india so the medieval coins were primarily issued with this tradition islamic tradition but not all the coins because vijayanagar is one of the important example where this tradition was not followed so you cannot say the all the medieval period only the limited period uh, some of the area was not accepting this tradition because the reason is simple because ruler was not belong uh, did not belong to that particular religion so they started issuing coins on ancient tradition while other rulers of india where they believer of islam they issued coins in islam this is one point and then the uh, th these information based on this most of the coin but they don't consider the each and every coins are having these information this information has been collected while after studying number of coins and then we can say following information can be taken from the coins sometimes you don't find karma here it's not necessary each and every coins of medieval india is having karma so i am saying that the overall information you can collect from these coins so i am coming to the uh, i'll just show you some of the coins then i'll uh, come to the topic these are some of the coins you can see this is called islamic type coins i mean here you find this coin belong to iltamash where karma is written as sultan al azam is there and then this is the coins of ghayasuddin balban this is the coins of uh, alauddin khalji this is coin belong to uh, ghayasuddin tughlaq you know the inscription on these coins very relevant very important because the inf in the information if you read because the in these coins became relevant because you are able to read them what is written on them that is the most important thing that we have to understand so for example i can give you one very interesting information about the coins of alauddin khalji what he writes on the coins he called i am the sikandar sani i means i am the second alexander calling himself i am the second alexander he was also calling i am the yaminul khalafa i am the right hand of the caliph caliph who was stationed in baghdad their names are appearing so he is calling i am the right hand of the caliph this type of messages which we are getting from the coins is very interesting uh, and that when you study inscription on the basis of that you can see i can also show you some of the coins very interesting ins inscription then i'll come to my own topic uh, here you can have a look of the coins of uh, Uh, token currency of Muhammad bin Tughlaq, the first one. The token currency of Muhammad bin Tughlaq is very interesting inscription that is uh, uh, very relevant for also here. What he call on the coins he called Man Ata Sultan Fakad Ata Rahman means those who obey king will obey God. But it's means one side he is calling this, uh, other side he is calling Mere Shud Raj Dar Rozgar Bandai Umidwar Muhammad bin. the present coin is a current coin and i request you to accept it yours faithfully muhammad bin tughlaq that is on the coin so he is requesting people when he introduced token currency which you know everybody what is the token currency and what was the problem taken place so he has been requesting people to accept yours faithfully muhammad bin tughlaq one side is religious appeal and other emotional or religious appeal and other side is requesting people to accept it then we also have a coins of uh, shesha suri where in slapping inscription the kalma is became very common on the coins and the name of four great caliph because this time is the period 15th century last and early 16th century the name of contemporary caliph are discarded from the coins so here we they started giving the name of the the great caliph abu bakar then usman and then abu bakar umar and usman and then ali they are known as the four great caliph so their name started appearing on the then we have the coins of mogal rulers so some of the mogal ruler have issued the coins of akbar uh, uh, these coins of akbar and then jahangir then shah jahan and aurangzeb and this is muhammad shah so i'm uh, not explaining this in in detail i just wanted to make you uh, acquaint with these coins and just wanted to tell you one thing what type of coins were issued and now i'm coming to the topic itself what how we have to study this you know uh, when you talk about art of any particular period particular in ancient period you generally understand what is sculptures 
art is generally being understood in the form of sculpture, in the form of painting, in the form of, then you say art and architecture, the architecture is also being it. And then we discuss, we recognize this different symbols found in architectural uh, buildings, architecture, or sometimes on the points also. Different motifs are being discussed, then depiction of deities has been discussed, the bust of a king has been discussed in ancient period. All these things which have been noted, written in there is not available in medieval period. The problem is that as sculptures, we can see very well. We can say number of books have been written by sculptures. Uh, every aspect has been covered by the art historian and they have contributed a lot to the subject on this subject. But when you're coming to the medieval period, only architecture became common for understanding this aspect, or some painting is also one of the art we can study mostly. But when we are talking about the point, what information we are getting related with the art? Here we have very important thing which we can understand. The reason being that these rulers or these artists of this particular period have been asked not to use these things. The sculpture was not allowed. Motive was not allowed. Because Islam does not encourage to depict any living thing anywhere. That does not encourage. So that was the reason why it was not noticed on the point. So then what information we how what art we are able to understand on the points. Now we are able to understand art on medieval points and Islamic point series. Number one is calligraphy. Number two is geometrical design. Number three is floral design. Number four is living motive. I am giving living motive in the last because that is exceptional. So that was the reason why I have given in the last. You know, uh, the most important and the most uh, uh, popular art in Islamic world was calligraphy. So calligraphy is a, is, is is art of writing, and every every uh, uh, not one or every uh, script has its own calligraphy. Calligraphy developed tremendously on the coins uh, in, in Islamic world. The one important reason was because the they do not allow their artists to depict living thing on the coins. Neither they can portrait any birds, neither they can portrait any animal. So that was the reason why they started developing their art in the form in calligraphy. Number one. Number two, the Later of Arabic letter, Ali, uh, Beta, Sa, Jim, He, whatever letter is uh, alphabet. All the alphabet is very geometrically designed. If you want to make the changes, you can make the changes that we're coming to see in uh, coming slides, how the changes is seen on the points. So this is the second point is that one is the artist was confined to beautification of letters because they had restriction. You are not, I am a believer of Islam, but I am not supposed to do things. Then where I have to develop, but my mind is artistic mind. I want to develop something little with art, but my area is very limited. So what they started, they started thinking, developing their own style in beautification of the letters. And that was the reason it developed tremendously. And the third point, uh, what, uh, uh, and this, the, uh, the second point is, this. and the third point you also mentioned, you know, uh, one of the reason of development of calligraphy is in Islamic world is Quran. Quran became mandatory for every Muslim. And there was no printing praise when Quran became as a, as a book uh, for the for the uh, for the, uh, for the human kind. So how, what they used to do, they used to simply copy the text. So one text was prepared, then other text. So in that different style of calligrapher was needed. Anybody who has got good handwriting, they have been asked you just copy, copy the things because it will be a good thing. Because Quran, and that is why the reason that we really consider Quran became one of the important reason for development of calligraphy. So three reasons, one, the artist was confined not to uh, confine to a particular area. Secondly, the geographical, uh, geometrical reason. Geometrical reason means they have given this type of thing. Uh, this type of uh, later has been designed in that manner that you can improve it. And third is the Quran. This is the, some of the scholars of the calligraphy scholars who have worked on that, they said the Quran is the main basis for development of uh, uh, calligraphy. But that could be uh, one reason. But three reasons can be cited here.
uh, then we have uh, 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 as far as calligraphy is developed, I said, and you know, uh, various form of art, uh, calligraphic art has been developed. I am coming to this topic now. You know, the earliest script in Arabic, I think one try to remember one thing, Arabic is not very old script as compared to Brahmi, as compared to Karushti, Arabic is a very recent script. Earliest inscription which has been reported is 250 AD, not before that. 250 AD was one Aleppo is uh, the place where some inscription has been found, and they said this was uh, uh, this was a, a Nabatean script. Similar, some later has been found which is related to which resembles the Arabic script. So they say this is Nabatean, but it is probably that. And then other script was also found in fourth century AD. Uh, 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 in in uh, in uh, Egypt also some of the inscription have been found. So two or three inscription have been found that cannot be earliest you can say to 250 AD. Sometimes fifth century AD, sometimes fourth century AD. Two three inscription has been reported. Uh, where on that basis they are saying this is a uh, for, uh, for not very old. So uh, at the time of Prophet uh, two is uh, two escape was very common. That was Nash and Kufi. This is the earliest script of calligraphy. Nasq and Kufik was the style of writing and it was developed in Nasq was developed in Makkah and Medina. Well, Kufik was developed in Kufa, which is a place in uh, Arab. So this area was uh, developing this thing. But the calligraphy developed tremendously not in this particular period, not in the Umayyad period, but it developed as an art, as a very important art in the time of Abbasid period. That was seven, eight century to 10th century, the period when it was considered as a, one of the important art in medieval period, in, in Islamic world. And very, uh, some renowned uh, calligrapher was born in, in Abbas courts. And one name can be mentioned here, very important, that was Ibn Muqalla. Ibn Muqalla is being considered the, uh, as, a, as, a, as a one of the uh, top calligrapher in the Islamic world and not only top calligrapher, but he has developed six style of cursive writing, which is known as Shish Kalam. I mean that the, the entire development of calligraphy, which has taken place today when it's going on, is based on is based on the Shish Kalam that was the style developed by Ibn Muqallah. That was 10th century, 900 something. This was his period was 1918 or 1980 or 70, something like this. So he was the man who has developed whatever calligraphy we have been writing, either it's in Nastalik or Nasq or Tugra, wherever you find. So plenty of style of calligraphy developed after that. But all these are based on this six Sals, Nashki, Muhakkak, Rehani, Tauti, and Rika. So these are the basic concept and given by Ibn Muqallah. So, and then, uh, and then we are coming to the uh, Mughal coins. And for example, Mughal coins use nostalgic style of calligraphy. And this calligraphy, which was developed in 16th century in Persia and based on Karsi battles, Tavke and Rika. I'm just giving one example. So for example, one example you can give here, Tavke and Rika, that Nastalik became most common style of calligraphy. Most of the calligraphy, when today in Urdu we have been writing, we are writing, we are using Nastalik style of calligraphy. It started in 16th century, and sometimes it is a late 15th century, but early 16th century is the well evident. But in mid 16th century, it became a master, uh, I mean, one of the leading script, uh, uh, style of calligraphy, in, not in uh, Iran, but in India also. So India is also very important. This was about the basic information of the calligraphy. Now coming to the coins. You know, in my book, in my recent book on the calligraphy and Islamic uh, medieval coins, what I argue in that book, I argue one thing that uh, the, the, uh, the calligraphy is a source of information, which has been, if you want to see the calligraphy development in India, you can see this calligraphy development from the coin itself. And that development is a continuous process right from the 8th century AD to 18th century. Entire period you can see the development of the coins, development of the calligraphy through coins. So I try to uh, develop my uh, uh, hypothesis that how you can understand this calligraphy uh, with the help of coins. And this art I am trying to understand here also uh, in this format. How you have to understand that? For example, I, I have one coins. 
this is a coin issued by Amir of Sin. The Amir of Sin was the earliest earliest coin where you find the Islamic tradition of coins was first noticed on Indian soil is uh, uh, is, is a is a Amir of Sin coins. Uh, Abdullah and they were uh, after Muhammad bin Qasim when he defeated the uh, local ruler of uh, uh, Sin the Heel. So he established his uh, uh, the, the area was under the control of the Muslim rulers uh, and the Khalifa of uh, Umayyad Khalifa. And then they started the governor who were appointed by the Khalifa were in position to issue their coins. And they used to issue coins on the uh, on from India. That is the earliest series, Islamic series of India. And here you find a new style of calligraphy that is the earliest style of calligraphy, which is Kufic style of calligraphy. I said this is the Kufic style of calligraphy, and Kufic style of calligraphy is the earliest calligraphy in the, not in India but Islamic world. So whatever things is being used in Islamic world, we are also using similar thing, but we are not lagging behind that. We have the same thing developed in India also. So the Kufic is the earliest escape which we notice on the coins of India. So that is not even if not 8th century to 9th century because Amir of Sin is being considered sometime 8th century, light 8th century or 9th century. So not uh, even if you go by 9th centuries, of course we can consider 9th century not one day. One so early 9th century is a period where Kufic style of coins are being uh, were in circulation and this particular type of coins are reported in uh, Sindh region, even Rajasthan number of coins have been reported from Rajasthan region and Gujarat region also have, we have find some of the coins uh, from that region. Uh, uh, plenty of coins have been reported, it's not a few coins or rare coin, I'm not saying it's a rare coin, it's a common coin and it was issued in the name of the, 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 the uh, governor who was there, like Abdullah is the name of a governor, Abdul Rahman is the name of a governor, Ali is the name of a governor, he used to issue in his own name. So here we have uh, calligraphy, one style that is Kufic style of calligraphy. And I try to, uh, in my work, when I try to uh, uh, identify all the coins with the style of calligraphy. And that was the reason why I said, even in one of my paper with the published in the Mathematics uh, Journal, uh, Journal of Numismatic Society of India, that uh, even without knowing Arabic script, without knowing Arabic language, one can identify the coins with the help of calligraphic development, calligraphy. So that was in my uh, list that I tried to explain this to them. Uh, so this, for example, this is a very pro very distinct style of calligraphy. Even if this type of coins is shown to you, you can very well identify yourself that this coin belongs to a particular dynasty. Here in 10th, 11th century or 10th century last, we have a, a coins of Amir of Sin. The coins of, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Mahmud Ghazni. Mahmud Ghazni is uh, one of the important uh, 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 coins of Muhammad bin uh, Mahmud Ghazni is very important in the history of Indian coinage because this is the first reference of uh, Indian coinage where you find Arabic inscription as well as Arabic and uh, Arabic and Sanskrit inscription at one place. This is the first inscription. It, it generally been accepted, but in the recent uh, study by Joe Crib and uh, some of the work has been done by Jokri, but he said it was not the first description because some of the coins in 8th century or 9th century tried to trace back to, uh, uh, to try trace back to the uh, Amir of Sin, wherein some letter of Devanagari can be seen. So in that case, he said the first reference of Devanagari or uh, or, uh, or uh, letter can be seen in, in prior, prior to this, not this, because I generally call it this is the first period, but one, two coins have been reported. There's some later, though later, I'm not, those coins have been given to me for a study. I was not able to uh, decipher properly, but some later you can read, two or three later, with Devanagari later is fine. But one example I can give you there, but otherwise the proper inscription with uh, uh, Arabic and uh, Sanskrit is seen for the first time on the coins of Mahmud Ghazni. What he is writing, he is writing one side Kalma, the basic creed of Islam, and the same has been translated into Sanskrit, Avektam Ekam Muhammad Avtar. That is written in Sanskrit. So Sanskrit. So that is the thing which we have noticed. But here I am going to explain you different aspects. I'm going to explain the art. One thing you have developed, we have seen that was the the the, uh, the Kufic style. Here, the style of calligraphy slightly changes. It has been termed as Eastern Kufic. Kufic is Eastern Kufic. 
of by 10 11th century this this a new style developed that was the eastern kofi so eastern kofi became most common style in this particular period so not only in india if you see the coins of uh, uh, islamic world i tell it is it is uh, uh, baghdad or it is uh, iran or wherever you want to see all these coins are reported in this style of calligraphy uh, then we have uh, mm, nask style of calligraphy i can just show you the style of calligraphy you know uh, this style of calligraphy was uh, each and every dynasty in india either the delhi sultanat or uh, or uh, bahmani or qutub shahi or nizam shahi or mughal wherever you go they develop their own style of calligraphy and that calligraphy is not confined to the, the one particular uh, uh, ruler but in that dynasty in fact has tried to issue in same similar manner sometime two three four dynasty has taken the same type of uh, uh, calligraphy so if for example i am just showing you the you, if you see the coins of this this coin belong to palban and this belong to qiyasuddin sorry alauddin khalji and this belong to qiyasuddin tughlaq all these are having similar style of calligraphy calligraphically there is no change the same way of writing al sultan same way of writing al azam no changes have been taken and this style of calligraphy in my study i try to explain that is is nashk style of calligraphy and the basis of my calling is nashk style of calligraphy is a different style of inscription uh, published by the 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 scholar on working on the uh, work on the the calligraphy and all that the number of good scholars internationally calligraphy has been done by number of uh, sejamani is one of the important yusuf safai is another important uh, scholar who has contributed a lot to the the subject so if we i try to compare these uh, inscription with the with uh, uh, with the is published inscription uh, uh, of a particular style of calligraphy then i said this is probably not same but similar to nashk style of calligraphy that uh, is my uh, the second so what we are understanding and understanding with the help of coins one aspect of art we are understanding with the calligraphy we are going to understand the uh, the this coin uh, belong to malwa sultanat the two had issued coins in different style of calligraphy i just wanted to show one very interesting fact uh, uh, this is how coins have been uh, used i mean for you it likes a line a line either sometime horizontal or sometime a vertical line can be seen but this is not a simple horizontal or vertical line it later has been written in this manner that it looks like a, a line but actually it is not a, a simple line but it is a letter which has been written and that is art you know what happened here try to understand very important and very technical aspect of the coinage you know uh, when you talk about the uh, coins of this particular period of any particular period not in medieval in ancient period the artist has been given to prepare the inscription in a prescribed uh, area either it is 2 cm or 1 cm 1.5 cm sometime less than 1 cm imagine you have been given to write an inscription inscription was prepared by somebody else you are not going to prepare the inscription inscription has been prepared by some other different authority and it will given to the artist group that this is the artist and you have to arrange all these inscription in a this much of space don't you think that writing this much information in a 1 cm needs a special art don't you think that the, the writing this much information in a small format needs a special skill and then it was not only that it was engrave and that you have to engrave engraving was another art so engraving on the coins was another art and all the things have been written in that so i said this is one of the leading art of that particular period the small coin tiny coins of 1 cm less than 1 cm half cm diameter is the of the coins and you are writing all information on the coins how it is possible unless you have full fledge the the uh, expert on that so what they have been doing they have been writing later in this format that it should come in all the things in gamcha so that was sometime what happened another important thing there are many scholars in islamic world in india also they have very good knowledge arabic and persian and urdu not number of scholars are there 
but it's not necessary you are a good scholar for arabic and persian you are able to read points reading points and particularly arabic inscription or persian inscription is an art because it has not been written as simple as you are writing today today you have been writing those who know arabic or persian or urdu they can read it very well what is written but here even i can uh, even i have like various experience uh, good scholars and uh, literate people who has good knowledge of arabic and persian come on on that subject and we have been generally going to meet them for a but they are not able to decipher the coins because deciphering coins is an art is an, is a, is, a, is a study you have to study how it is being uh, understood so that was the thing here you also find not only the uh, this thing the inscription but often find some uh, the symbols of the coin the symbols is also appearing why symbols are appearing symbols have been interpreted as a uh, mint mark of a particular mint that i can that i'll be discussing a little later one style of calligraphy which developed uh, uh, in 15th century in india and uh, uh, not in india of course uh, developed in uh, but it was very well uh, witness on the uh, on on, a, on indian coins particularly on the coins of uh, uh, bengal sultan if you see the bengal sultan coins we find this type of you know uh, for anybody i mean those who even don't know they simply say this is a line is appearing no this is not line i said these all are a uh, a letters which have been designed in this format and this letter has to be read and then you are in position to read say this what is there so this style of calligraphy has been termed as tugra style of calligraphy and tugra uh, became very common uh, uh, in bengal sultan not one or two three, three four rulers have there number of followers are not all the rulers but three four rulers have issued their coins with this style of calligraphy uh, where in you find uh, uh, tugra style of calligraphy can be seen uh again you are coming to the uh, different dynasty that was jonpur jonpur is another uh, provincial sultanate they too had issued to write style of calligraphy here you can see to write style of calligraphy then uh, we also have a coins of jonpur but this simple is later like for example al sultan what they write alif is very stick tick uh, long stick of uh, alif so that looks like uh, lam is also being used in that but those who know arabic uh, a person or two they can uh, read it they can understand it then similarly uh, here you can also see some of the coins have been reported uh, where tugra can be seen on the coins of uh, two dynasty one is in dakkan that was adil shahi of uh, Bijapur. Not all the coins. A few coins have been reported where Tugrai style of calligraphy is seen. Abla Bali is written, and this is uh, uh, Ibrahim uh, uh, Adil Shah. And the other coins is is uh, the the coins of uh, uh, Adil Shah, Ali Adil Shah, where he called uh, Abi Abu Talib and so on. So this is the inscription, and this is the style of calligraphy we have noticed. Uh, Tugrai style of calligraphy. I said two or three dynasty. You can say even. uh some of the not exact tugra but related with tugra style is also being understood here on the coins of sharuki type coins of babar and hemayu these are the coins of babar and hemayu and this is uh, uh, the tugra is a, is a tugra style of calligraphy uh not in stick scene stick scenes if you want to see the tugra that is the uh, jonpur that is a perfect style and perfect matching of tugra you can see in the on the coins of jonpur and bangal but here we have some influence of that uh this style of calligraphy is not confined to uh, to coins also but even other part of uh, other, uh, other antiquities or, or other monuments are also having this thing uh now most common script which has been noticed on the coins calligraphy is nastaliq nastaliq is the most common script which has uh, uh, style of calligraphy which has been noticed and it is very easy to read it's very the letter ha uh, letters are very bold and easy to read those who are in position to read language arabic or persian and urdu they can very well read it so you can have a look of this the study of calligraphy uh it developed in uh, 16th century particularly the mughal period akbar was the man who uh, developed it tremendously and from this period onwards most of the coins almost uh, all the coins not most of the, all the coins of mughal dynasty were issued in this uh, this style of calligraphy and other dynasty also issued coins in this manner so the nastaliq style of calligraphy from 16th century onwards became the main style of calligraphy on indian coins then we have another uh, example you can have a look of the coins of uh, calligraphy on nastaliq nuruddin jahangir uh, uh, 
Nuruddin Jahangir, Shah Barsha. This is coins of Jahangir. You just try to compare. I mean, this coin is very similar to the coins of uh, Akbar and uh, Jahangir and coins or Akbar coins are similar as far as the, the, the style of calligraphy is concerned. It is absolutely similar. There's no problem because all of them are using the similar style of calligraphy. So it became very common. For more comparison, you can see these coins here again, the coins of uh, Shah Jahan, then Aurangzeb, then Muhammad Shah, then Shah Alam. All the coins, uh, all the coins you can have a look of uh, uh, here also. Here we can see. The, so Nastalik style of calligraphy is one of the important leading style of calligraphy, which you see always on the coins of Mughal. And from 16th century onwards, Indian calligraphy was uh, primarily with, uh, Indian coins were primarily issued with the uh, with this style of calligraphy, except uh, one example I can cite here about the coins of Hyderabad Nizam. Uh, particularly the Nizam of Hyderabad coins, if you see the machine stacking coin system of Hyderabad Nizam coins, wherein he introduced, reintroduced Tura style of calligraphy on his coins. But very interesting if you see the coins of, unfortunately, I just forget to uh, bring the, uh, the, the illustration here. Uh, but uh, sometime I can show you if you want, I can, I can show you just after a few minutes. Uh, here you can see the coins of uh, all these coins were issued. So the first section which have, we have covered that is the, the calligraphy aspect. The art we can understand with the help of numismatic. So this is the art we can understand. So this uh, aspect of culture we are able to interpret with the help of coins. The second aspect which I said the uh, geometrical design. It's a purely scientific system by which lines are curved, produced, square, rectangle, hexagon, polygon, circles, and maybe many more shapes. And the use of geometrical design in medieval has been commonly been noticed on architecture and other objects. Coin surface of the period also created different geometrical design. That is uh, uh, that we, we have seen it. And geometrical design is not only in the medieval period, but in the ancient period, we have plenty of geometrical design you can see. Uh, Delhi Sultanate represent square coins. And then uh, I am just going to show you the, just you read, read it and then I'll just go to the uh, artists made uh, these coins more decorative. So firstly, simply a square and circle was introduced. But later on, they have made a different style of uh, geometrical design, which I'm coming to the that bit. You try to understand from here. There are six coins have been illustrated here. Five coins, not six coins have been illustrated. See, coin number one, you find simple double square or square is seen on the coins. Here again, a square is seen and out of, and the margin is also there. Here, circle is seen. So a square and margin were the most common geometrical design. Why it has was introduced, why it was introduced. It has a reason for that. It was introduced because they wanted to, because sometimes what happened, many things are out of plan because machine was not being used to stack the coin. It was everything was a manual. So in die stacking technique, sometimes the die engraver, the, the, the die, uh, the person who was keeping die, his hand may be, uh, hand may be uh, disturbed. So it will be die is uh, uh, disturbed and then the full legend is not appearing on the coin. That is uh, there on the coin. So what they try to do, the main legend should come within the square or circle. It should not be, it should not be uh, out of the flag. So, for example, he is writing here, here Fi had al Imam al Muntasir Amirul Mumineen. Here is the importance is the name of contemporary caliph. This has been written within the circle. And when the some portion is out of flag, the major portion and the prime things should be on the coins. Similarly, here they are writing as Sultan Al Azam Shamsu Dunya, Waldin El Tamash. So El Tamash name is appearing here. So it should not be, it should not be out of flight. Here again, this type of thing are coming. Again, you find the Manata Sultan Fakadada Rahman that is within the circuit because these all are being done by artists. It is artist who is going to decide what has to be written, how it has to be written. He was very made much clear that what is very important and what has to become in the circle or what does it should go. If it's something go out of line, that will not make any difference. So what is, is, is the concept which they have given? So here you find these three, four types, only two types of uh, uh, this. sometimes double circle, sometimes circle, uh, sometimes uh, double square, sometimes only it's a square. This uh, geometrical design is another important. Coming to this period, Mughal period, 
you see geometrical design very simple now come to the name different period akbar period the coins of akbar and jahangir is being shown here the first coin which is uh, listed here is of akbar here you find the the picture the design is in a different format not a square not uh, a circle but various uh, different design is seen on the coins this particular coins is very interesting in the form that it is not a design on the coin but coin itself has been designed cut in this format this looks like a geometrical design it is called mehrabi mehrabi is a mehrab which you we call uh, arches mehrab so mehrabi is a style of uh, uh, coins which was introduced by akbar the other is also there available that i am coming to the first example uh, is not in akbar period but in malwa period but here you can just see the coins of akbar where a different style has been shown geometrical design is very much there where mehrabi style of geometrical design is seen again you see a uh, geometrical design in various format all these circle then then we have taken mehrab and then again double mehrab so different style of geometrical design has been witnessed on have been witnessed on the coins of medieval period here again you see the coins of jahangir but various uh, different uh, geometrical design so geometrical design um, now you try to correlate the things try to correlate this thing that this particular coins which i am showing you is of 2 cm in 2 cm diameter in 2 cm diameter what artist is making imagine the design imagine the work the caliber of that particular person who is involved in this type of art so i said the art is always being one of the uh, always being an important effect uh, important uh, uh, feature of the, uh, the of the, of the is medieval coins so this form this we can see in this format if you want to study art in ancient period of course you want to see dt and how the dt is be used the dresses can be said uh, a scholar have uh, studied the kushan coins the dresses on the kushan coins that has been studied because in that manner you have to study but you have to study these coins in this format which i am going to explain you so this uh, the second aspect uh then uh, we have geometrical design in bengal sultan now you see how simple you have seen the coins of delhi sultan but by the time you are coming to 15th century or 16th century this design has developed tremendously and this design is and now you can see beautiful design you can see if you want to see you can see this coin the, the last one such a beautiful uh, design is then and then beautification is in this format i i just want to see our beautification of the coins uh, can be studied with with this uh, angle angle is usko uh, is before you uh, then uh, geometrical design is another geometrical design you can also have a look of the uh, this is a riyasuddin uh, of uh, um riyasuddin shah of malwa dynasty uh, where in sorry nasir shah i'm sorry nasir shah of malwa dynasty he has issued coins in this format again the geometrical design the coin has been used in this like akbar had used mehrabi type here again the architectural mehrabi is seen on the coin these are the the different style of uh, uh, geometrical design is seen in kashmir we have a different style again you see this is a this is a peculiar style of kashmir and each and each every dynasty they have they have developed their own style so this particular type of style is always fine on the coins of kashmir sultan while the, the uh, these uh, style are not found in kashmir these are only found in the bengal sultan this again found in the bengal sultan so bengal they have developed their own Uh, every dynasty have their own about calligraphy they have also started issuing their own as well as the uh, the things uh, as well as the calligraphy as well as the geometrical design so this was the third uh, uh, second stage of art we can understand with the help of numismatic evidence and then third is uh, a representation of floral design uh, floral design you know uh, flora and fauna is uh, uh, has been very well discussed uh, um, by the two important uh, 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 contemporary uh, record of mughal period that is babar nama and uh, tuzuk e jahangir both uh, by written by uh, emperor hims uh, themselves by babar and jahangir and though these two these two have uh, taken very keen interest in the coins uh, of uh, of uh, 
their own style and but the, uh, the flora and fauna if you want to see you uh, design you want to see you can see in the on the points of primarily on the mughal points not much places but mughal points is very uh, prominently seen on the points of uh, uh, one you can see in the Babur, uh, Akbar period, and of course, Jahangir was the uh, tremendous in this thing. I can just show you one important. Uh, these are the two different coins, not one coin. I, I just wanted to make it two. You just imagine, you see the coins, the beautiful beauty of this coin. You see the beauty of this coin, how it is uh, described. I mean, this type of design you have seen in Mughal paintings, and you have also seen this type of in the architectural design. And you see, they have an area to display whatever they want in the architecture. But our artists, the artist working on the numismatic, working on the coins, has two centimeter in his in his hand. In two centimeter, what type of different fuller design has been witnessed? And the some of the coins are also reported where uh, uh, a bird is seen, although. Uh, I'm coming to this. Okay. Now, second, you can also see the coins of uh, uh, here. The coins of the Jahangir, where floral design can be seen. Various beautiful floral design is seen on the coins of Jahangir also. Here, it is uh, on the, all this uh, uh, different type that we have seen. So, and then uh, animal motif. Uh, then, so, what 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 is very relevant here to understand? This is very much related with the, those who have a basic idea of the Mughal painting. They can find it. This Mughal painting has this type of uh, floral design is seen. Even this, uh, uh, you can see the architectural places wherein this type of things are appearing on the points of medieval Mughal period. But Akbar and Jang is, is known for this thing. Then other aspect which is very relevant here is the animal motif. You know, uh, as I said very in the beginning, that the Mughal ruler or medieval ruler have not issued coins with the inscriptional, uh, not issued coins with the pictorial devices. But a few examples can be given. One sentence in hot trite, we cannot say that. I said that generally it was, you can use the word generally. So one or two examples can be given here where you can see uh, the some pictorial devices are available. But the pictorial devices which has been noticed on the coins are the two sections. If you want to see the coins of pictorial devices in the time of Muhammad bin Sam, or Muhammad Ghori, or Il Tamash, or Raziya Sultan, or Balban, and uh, not Balban, or, or prior to Balban, their coins are also reported with the uh, bull and horseman type coins. But this bull and horseman type, which I'm going to show you just now, uh, just I'm just going to discuss with it. Uh, and the representation of living motif coins are more evident in Mughal period. The coins of forward depict birds, hawk, duck, human figure, Ram and Sita. I'm, I'm discussing all these things. First, you can read it, and I can just go. The animal motif is also depicted in the form of a lion along with the rising sun and emblem. The Mughal Empire mainly noticed on the portrait of the type coins of Jagir, zodiac coins. All these are being discussed now. Here. We begin with this three, three coins. You know, uh, very interestingly, uh, the first coin which is being noticed here is a Lakshmi type coins of Muhammad bin Sam. You know, uh, Muhammad Ghori or Muhammad bin Sam, who established his, uh, uh, after defeating Prithvira Chuhan, he was in position to establish his uh, in North India. And then after North India, he his general were in position to capture the center India. So two important type of Muhammad bin Sam is well known, very well reported in North India. One is Lakshmi type coins in center India and bull and horseman type coins of Northern India. I want to just explain you, then you can understand why it was used on the coins of them, on the coins of uh, this Muslim ruler. You know, uh, bull and horseman is a most accepted and powerful currency of North India right from 8th century AD to 12th century AD. Roughly in 13th, 13th century, not 12th, 13th century in North India. And this was introduced by Hindu Shahi ruler of Kabul. Samandeo or Sri Samandeo coins are found in good number. And most of the Rajput rulers, like all the Rajput rulers, having control in the region of North India, either it is Tomar, it is Chauhan, whosoever having control in the northern part of the country, they issued their coins on bull and husband type. So 8th century AD onwards, bull and husband type were the major currency of northern India. 
when Mohammed Go, uh, when uh, Ghaznavi ruler captured uh, Mahmud Ghazni uh, was in position to defeat the, the northern rulers of that particular region, there uh, Punjab and Lahore was under the control of Ghaznavi rulers, and they issued coins in a similar pattern, where bull depiction of bull can be seen and horse and horse rider can be seen. Even the inscription in Devanagari, Sri Samanjo, gradually it was discarded, and then their own name started appearing on the coins. Similar tradition was also adapted by Muhammad bin Sam, where bull is seated bull, Shivnandi is there, and one side, another side is horse and horse rider. And name of the ruler, Sri Muhammad Sam, is written in Devnagri. Another side, Sri Hamid. This tradition was followed by Iltamash. This was followed by the successor of Iltamash, Razia, and all that, till uh, uh, before Balban. Balban discarded it after Balban because these are not happening. So what I'm saying, this type of tradition where you find the bull and horse in North India, it is, in my opinion, it is generally, not in my opinion, but all, all the numismatists, they consider it, is a continuation of time. It was not a new introduction because it, the currency was accepted among the masses. So the rulers were not in position to change immediately. So Islamic currency came into existence gradually, not immediately. So that was the reason early ruler of India, they issued coins on the similar pattern. Coin existed in India. The existing coins were copied, was followed. And of course, they started changing their name. Their name was Muhammad Sam. They written Muhammad Sam. If Tamash name is there, so he's writing the Tamash. His name is uh, Rukhnuddin Ibrahim. So he's writing Rukhnuddin Ibrahim. Whatever name is the ruler, they have been writing on the coin. So this is one information. Similarly, you can see the, the coins of uh, uh, Lakshmi type coins from the uh, center India. It was issued from center India that was Kalachuris were having control in that region. From that region, they have issued coins in this pattern. Wherein you very well see Lakshmi is depicted and the name of the ruler Sri Muhammad Swami Devnagar. Again, the same theory applies here, continuity of time, continuation of time. And this we can also see in the Mughal period. After Mughal, when the British started issuing coin, they followed the Mughal tradition. East India Company followed, French East India Company followed, even then uh, Maratha and then Rishik, all these rulers, princes, the Rajput, all of them had issued coins on the same pattern. The reason being that acceptance among the masses. So this category of coins is being considered as the acceptance among the masses, just continuity of the time. So we have living motif on the coins, but reason I have given. Now the second point which we can see here is uh, in the Mughal coin. Here is a different concept. In the Mughal period, we have a different concept. Mughal is not a continuation of time, not at all. It was introduction of their own style. They introduced a new thing on the coins. What new thing they have introduced? For example, portrait has never been issued by any Muslim ruler in India. All the uh, rulers, early ruler, either it is a uh, Kushan or Gupta or where it is, the depiction of portrait was very common. No, no Muslim ruler in India issued. But Jahangir made it important changes. Jahangir in some of the coins, but not all the coins, a few coins have been reported where he depicted portrait, his own portrait in different postures. For example, uh, holding a, uh, a cup of wine on hand, in his hand. Having uh, holding a uh, apple in his hand or uh, holding a book on his hand, a different poster can be seen on the coins of Jahangir. Here you can see the Jahangir, and then we have uh, coins of uh, Jahangir, but issued in the name of his father. His father has been depicted on the coin. You can see Akbar has been depicted. Allah Akbar, you know, Jerusalem is written, and this side and the rising sun is the coins. The rising sun and lion is the emblem of Mughal, so they they, they are generally seen on the coins. But this type of coins, either these are unsimilarly uh, the Asirgar coins where the birds have been depicted. So these coins were not for uh, not for continuation. These coins were simply a new introduction introduced by the ruler. Introduced, they have introduced their own uh, 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 coinage or own coin. And similarly, Akbar had issued this particular coin, which in the center I want to discuss it here, uh, is the Ram Sita coins. Akbar had issued coins with the depiction of Ram and Sita on the one side and uh, his Elahi date and mint on his other side. Again, this was not a continuation. It was Akbar's own, uh, own style. Akbar wanted to please his uh, masses. 
he wanted to just please his master because Tulsi Das was contemporary to Akbar, and Ram became very common in the time of Akbar. So he simply wanted to please the master and issued some of the coins, which were depiction of God and God. I mean Ram and his consort Sita, and written Ram Sia on uh, uh, in Devanagari. That is very important. But these coins are not found in good number. Probably it was a commodity issue issued in a limited number, uh, uh, distributed among the. Uh, Rich nobility or important people were given as a gift or whatever may be reason. But it has been reported. One coin is uh, uh, in the collection of British. I have seen it in British Museum collection. And uh, BHU uh, Bharat Kala Bhavan also have has one coin. Uh, in, and these particular coins are known in both gold and silver. Interestingly, both the metal are reported. So a few coins are also in the collection of some of the private uh, uh, coin collectors. They, they are having there. But uh, I have seen it in the British Museum London. Uh, this was second uh, uh, section, and then we have uh, 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 zodiac coins on the coins of uh, the zodiac coins by uh, uh, Jahangir. Jahangir also issued coins with the depiction of two zodiacs. That, that, uh, you know, zodiac signs are very common nowadays. Every Sunday, we people want to see what is our zodiac, what is uh, the week of our things, and all that. This concept is very popular nowadays but Jagir had issued coins with the depiction of all civil zodiac coins on his on any of silver and gold coins so all gold and silver coins have uh, 12 uh, all 12 zodiacs on the coin. and he said i have issued coins uh, 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 with a continuation of how he, why the concept from where he has taken, because Jahangir was known for a very innovative idea in the coinage. So one important uh, idea is the issue of the issuing of coins with the zodiac sign. You know, zodiac coins uh, uh, in its world context, I'm talking not in Indian context, world context uh, uh, is very rare, uh, is a new invention in India in the sense, but all the uh, earlier, uh, earlier in one of the countries, zodiac coins have been reported, but all 12 zodiacs are represented on one coin. But here, Jahangir issued coins in all the 12 different styles. But one coin uh, is in one of the representation of Jokrim when he was working on that. So he showed one coin. I'm forgetting the country's name, where from where it was, but not, of course, not from India. Some youth. Uh, Roman, I don't know exactly where this country it was uh, issued, but Jahangir had issued coins with the depiction of all the 12 zodiac. Here, you zodiac, what does it indicate? Here, you want to zodiac interpret zodiac in this format. If a student of numismatic is, is, is want to study in different aspect, then you can uh, zodiac signs and all that. You can be it can be interpreted, and people have interpreted zodiac signs of uh, uh, Jahangir. But what he said, I'm just trying to explain. You. He said uh, in his tzu that uh, my father started issuing coins with the name of month on the coins because earlier month name was not there on the coins. A few coins have been reported, but mostly coins with month was not common. It was Akbar in Ilahi coins that started writing the name month name Ilahi month, particularly the zodiac calendar based on based on the uh, Zoroastrian calendar. Their names are appearing on the coins. So my father used to issue coins with the, the zodiac sign uh, with, with a month name. So I came to know that they, a, it has a, every month has a zodiac sign. So I ordered to issue coins with the zodiac sign. So this is the uh, uh, thing which he has said on the coins. But for us in this particular lecture, in this particular discussion, what is important that zodiac sign has been depicted or portrait has been depicted, beautiful portrait has been depicted in a small diameter of the coins, two centimeter or 1.5 centimeter with such a brilliant style of with brilliant style of escape. So that is what I wanted to explain you, how you can use art or you can use any form of the uh, data, uh, anything related with the, uh, the numismatic evidence. Uh, and then uh, one more thing, I'm just going to finish it. I'm not going to take much of it. I think it's better if you can have some discussion. Uh, so I'll just stop here with one important uh, conclusion. You know, interestingly, as far as the calligraphy is concerned and the uh, Ismaili calligraphy is concerned, it was not only on the uh, not only on the coins or on, uh, not only on the uh, this thing. You know, what you call uh, is, is 
uh, is a, uh, on the coins, but the calligraphy used on a particular period has also witnessed on the other places, monument. For that study has also been uh, made by me in other things. And one of my students is also working on that particular thing, particularly in Deccan region. So what he says, she's trying to trace, the calligraphy used in the coins is similar to the calligraphy used in the monuments. For example, she's working in the Deccan. Was Bahmani calligraphy used, coins of Bahmani is having the similar calligraphy on the coins of uh, uh, the monuments on that. So what I find that most of the time, most of the thing, it is really, it is almost similar, the calligraphy used on the, either in the coin, either in the monument, or either on the on any object for example and you have number of uh, uh, some of the time you have uh, some uh, you what you call it is a mm, is a uh, various object pot and all that where calligraphy is seen so uh, you can also see the calligraphy there uh, so thank you very much uh, uh, all of you thank you very much uh, thank you Ekram for giving me this opportunity thank you thank you sir thank you very much now we will take some questions. Is there any? Yes, sir. Yes, Sidesh. Yes, yeah. Sir, good evening, Hello. sir. Good evening. Sir, I have a question that is calligraphy uh, limited to only the Arabic uh, script or it is uh, available in other uh, script also uh, which are in India? No, no, calligraphy is every script has a calligraphy, style of writing. Calligraphy is a style of writing. Every script has a style of writing. But I said it developed tremendously in Arabic and Persian. You try to remember Arabic, Persian, Urdu as a similar script. A script, there is no change. Language is different, but a script is similar. So calligraphy is mainly on the, the Islamic calligraphy, means the Arabic and Persian. Every script has a calligraphy, art of writing. You have seen the different font in English. So that is what is the style of calligraphy. The, the font is what we, okay. we call it calligraphy. Okay, sir. Thank Hello. You. Hello, sir. Yeah. Yeah, please. Uh, sir, thank you for this wonderful session. And it's very interesting too. So my question is, is there any comparison between ancient Indian coins and medieval Islamic coins? In, in comparison, in what sense? Uh, in, in... Yeah, yeah, I, I, I got you. you know, uh, the comparison can be made in two different manner. One is very important is the comparison you want to make. There is a, the, in the metallurgy, if you want to study the weight is standard and all that you can understand. But if you want to see the inscriptional part, there is different, totally different. Because it has a different tradition of writing the inscription. They don't have this thing. But huh, one thing is there. All these two places you can find either in ancient period or medieval period, the ruler's names is appearing. So authority, the ruling authority has always been important. You can very well see the ruling authority, the influence of ruling authority on the coins. If you belong to a particular region, particular faith, your faith has been reflected. So the rural, uh, in that way, uh, this comparison can be made. But uh, otherwise, in total, there's no comparison in this. But other ways is also the, the purpose of coin is similar, the same purpose, they are doing the same purpose because the basic purpose of coin is, of course, uh, is, is a, is a uh, money and circulation money, so no purpose was same. But the two different tradition, I said in the very beginning, we have a two different tradition in India. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, okay uh, before, uh, uh, before uh, we go ahead with the discussion, May I request uh, Dr. Danish Moin to stop yeah. sharing the screen first, please? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, and then we'll go to Mosami Datta. She has raised her hand. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, so, Mosami Datta, go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, thank you very much. Uh, that is a very nice presentation and informing us to very much. Sir, I have a question that uh, uh, Durja Hunt controlled the power during the Jahangir time. So, uh, uh, was it say issued any coin? Yeah, plenty of coins. Plenty of coins have been reported in the name of Jahan, Jahan. Not one or two, plenty of coins. Uh, so, there is any difference uh, between uh, yeah, Jahan yeah, yeah, and I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, I got you one. You know, uh, issuing coins in the name of Jahangir has always been a debate among the historians, particularly. They said that uh, issuing coins in the name is uh, is generally reflect that the Nur Jahan was ruling, ruling on behalf of uh, 
uh, Jahangir was puppet and all that, something like that. But in numismatic, I, I personally do not agree with that. Why I don't agree? I don't agree because of the inscription form in the coin. What inscription said? The, this coin find beauty with the name of Noor Jahan. And it was introduced, it was used by the order of Jahangir. So Jahangir has ordered to issue coins, and because he was very much in love with his wife, so he had tried to issue coin depicting her name on the coin, though she was very much active, but the issuing coins in the name of Nur Jaha does not make sense that she was a re really ruling on the behalf. Secondly, uh, uh, coins from in the name of Jahan is primarily issued, in the name of Nur Jaha is primarily issued in a couplet format. Most of the coins, well, in fact, all the all the coins of the Nur Jaha has been issued with the couplet, all the, the different Persian couplet. And couplet coins were very common in the uh, in the time of Jahangir. Uh, Akbar introduced it in, in Mughals, but Jahangir was the most uh, important ruler who had issued plenty of uh, coins. I think more than a different hundred couplets are reported. Uh, Thank you, sir. Sir, can I have a question? Yeah, please, Ram? please, please, sir. Yes, um, yes uh, uh, Dr. Fayyaz, yes. Yeah, good evening, Dani, sir. Thank you so much for this wonderful uh, presentation. And um, I just have two uh, small questions, or maybe. Yeah, please, please. Uh, is there, I mean, I think we had uh, one discussion on this that, uh, you know, in Kashmir, you have this tradition, or not tradition, or an occasion where. Uh, rulers have used uh, Sufi, I mean, or spiritual or religious figures, uh, or their names in in coins. Is there any tradition elsewhere in subcontinent where, I mean, yeah, this tradition I... has been uh, okay. repeated? One question, sir. The other thing is that, uh, with regard to paintings, uh, generally we find uh, the name of the painter somewhere, or I mean, uh, the name comes out. In one or the other form, is it that with regard to coins, do we have? Yes, such I tradition? couldn't understand your second question. Second question, I'm not getting. Uh, sir, uh, I mean uh, the coin. Obviously, since you were, you know, I mean the whole discussion was on uh, the artist in the making of the coin. So, is it that do we get any names of the artists in coins or anywhere? The way we get it in paintings. Yes, I got it. Uh, okay. The first question which you asked me, uh, it was never been noticed by in this form. Only one of my uh, presentation, one of the article uh, I have presented in the, uh, one of the conference, where I reported one thing that Sufi Muinuddin Chishti has been represented on the coins of Akbar. Okay. So one Ja Muin, it is written Ja Muin on the one side, and other side is written uh, uh, is uh, other side is written. Uh, Zarb Ajmer. So that is uh, one example I can give those, and then that example can be cited for both Jahangir as well as uh, Akbar. So Akbar. this is the one Akbar. example we can cite. And apart from that, uh, some of the coins uh, of uh, Adil Shahi ruler Abla Bali is calling himself Abla Bali. That is also a form of Sufism. Says, I mean, the Suf, uh, because he was very much uh, influenced with the Sufi culture. So oh. that is, and third example I can give you the coins of uh, Tipu Sultan. Mm, one of the coins of Tipu Sultan in uh, silver was Khizri, where Khizri is written. I it is said that Khizri, Khizar was one of the uh, uh, local Sufi saint in that particular region. So probably his name has been written on the coin. So three examples I have given in my the paper. So first example is the very uh, prominent example. And that too, it was not very common. And the coins from Yamoin type coin from Ajmer is not common. It's a very extremely rare coins because I do remember I found somewhere uh, in British Museum and I was working there in British Museum. So I found it and that became very interesting for me. And then it was published later on, it was published also. So this example you can give. Now regarding second question. You know, as far as the, the references are available, what we started understanding with the help of mint mark. You know, uh, the, most of the coins, particularly, this became very common uh, in, in the Mughal period also. Mughal period and, and uh, starting from the time of uh, 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 is, is, is Malwa Sultan, wherein diff different types of mint mark has been reported. 
and it has been assumed it has been hypothesis it's just a hypothesis it's not be very uh, other uh, discussion has not been placed this is my hypothesis that this mark may be considered is an artist mark or mint mark mint master who is designing and all that that could be a reason and for that i had discussion with nadim rizvi much earlier so he wanted to uh, wanted to be able to write a paper together so but we did not realize he said a similar type of mark is also been found in a artificial place so quite possible that uh, it is same family or same guild was may involved in both the activities one section is involved in the and the writing inscription in the monuments other is involved in writing inscription in the points so some, something like this can be happen but this uh, i can just uh, say say this thing thank you sir thank you so much yes uh, mehboob basha thank yes basha sir much. sir thank you very much for a very wonderful presentation uh, this is an extension of uh, what madam moushumi was asking about in the morning session dr jha had presented in which we have women being depicted along with men Yeah. Like Kumara Devi, along with her husband. Yes. On coming to medieval period, you had beautifully shown uh, where Akbar had issued coins. Uh, Sita along with Rama. Yeah. And then, do we have any woman being depicted along with any Mughal king? If uh, no, if if yes, who are they? If no. is it any indication of the prevailing orthodoxy of the muslim kings okay can i answer you this is okay no the i said in the very beginning that the uh, the medieval coins were not pictorial based so the depiction picture depicting picture picture was not a, not a criteria for this thing it was one or two example which we have given was just 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 uh, continuity and akbar's own style of working you know that was the lakshmi ram and sita has been depicted and of course we can also say lakshmi has been depicted in the coins of muslim ruler but the representation of name of the ruler name of the women has been very well reported that is nur jaha that we can see and not only that we have the coins of slightly early 19th century or late 18th century and 19th century that is the coins of shah jahan begum coins of uh, the shah jahan begum of bhopal and these are the lady emperors they have issued coins in their own name so in my category we have very clear in my uh, the area of interest we have the uh, lady ruling they have issued their coins razia had issued coins and her, her own name then we have uh, uh, coins of uh, nur jahan the name in the name of nur jahan then also we have uh, in later period that is uh, uh, all these all three uh, the queen uh, all three queens of bhopal they have issued coins with their own names i mean shah jahan begum is one example i can say that is uh, because depiction was not at all uh, with the feature of the coins of this particular period one or two example which i have given it was nothing to do with the feature it was just one example i said why akbar had issued and why jahangir had issued that was uh, and this was not a, a currency which was a currency of the masses it was a limited currency was issued on the for a particular period to where we call it a commodity probably commodity issue to make any occasion uh, successful or something like this do the begums of bhopal figure on those coins no coins their names are appearing their names are appearing oh, no, not the pictures no, not the pictures pictures not appearing picture uh, after that we have coins of uh, uh, elishpur elishpur uh, is a uh, is a fiduciary of uh, hyderabad nizam uh, wherein you find a lion is depicted otherwise uh, these are not lion is depicted in the uh, some of the coins of uh, elishpur ruler Uh, where land is depicted otherwise you don't find depiction of living thing that was the reason i started for the last stage which i said because it was not a feature it was reported and then we have to discuss and we have to include in that thank you sir thank you okay okay so um you know what i could gather from tanish moin sir's explanation uh it is that we do not have any image of any muslim women on coins yeah 